Hi guys, I'm Rick. Welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm making pressure cooker goulash. Alright, I have my 6 quart electric pressure cooker warming up here and it's set on the brown feature. And if your pressure cooker doesn't have brown or sear, just turn on high pressure and just leave the lid open. It'll heat up the brown your meat. And I had made this video a little over a year ago. And I was messaged by a viewer named uh, Jeff. And Jeff made me aware that the video got cut short. It only went into about a minute and a half. I don't know what happened. But he had said that uh, he made this for his family like two times. And him and the kids went crazy for it. So he asked would I either redo the video or would I put down the uh, ingredients online. So I'd rather do the video. That's easier for me. So I'm going to make this for you, Jeff. And uh, for the foreign viewers out there, I know this is how you guys make goulash where you're from. But here in the United States, this is how we make goulash. And in my neck of the woods here in uh, central Pennsylvania, we actually call this chop suey. All right, so now that we got that out of the way, I have my six-quart pressure cooker heating up here. And I have a pound and a half of 80-20 hamburger here. I'm not going to add any oil in here because it's going to put off enough grease of its own. I'm going to brown this and chop it up till it's fully uh, cooked. And then after that's done, I'll be back. Alright, now that my burger is halfway fried here, I'm using dehydrated minced onions today. If you have fresh, you would add them in now too. You would add in a medium onion dice fine. I'm going to add in about two tablespoons of minced dehydrated onion in there so it's time to get softened in there with the burger. And I'm going to continue frying this until uh, it's cooked through. Alright, now that my burger is brown, and I didn't drain off the grease because there really isn't that much in there, I'm going to add in two 28 ounce cans of crushed tomatoes. And uh, Jeff, this is a little different than uh, the last time I made it. This is even quicker and simpler and it will still taste as uh, delicious as the other way. Alright, I'm going to get both cans of those down in there. And if you want to be more heart healthy or you're on a restricted diet, you can drain that grease off of there. But like I said, there really isn't that much in there. Okay, I'm going to stir that around. Now, I'm putting in two 8-ounce cans of tomato sauce. Or you can put in one 15-ounce can of tomato sauce. So all my store carried was the little ones. And I still have this on uh, the brown feature because I don't want it to cool down. I want my sauce to warm up some so I can season it. And let me find my full liner here, okay? I got, a, I got a ways to go until this gets full. You want to watch that when you're using a pressure cooker not to overfill it because here's my full line right here. So we have a good like three inches ago. So we'll have enough room. All right, I'm going to start seasoning this. I'm going to start out with some salt. And I'm going to taste this as I go. And guys, don't mind me double dipping, just me and my family eating this. So I'm going to put a teaspoon of salt in there. Give her a stir. And I always taste as I go. That way there you can add a little more in. And it's easier to figure out your uh, spices if you don't want it at a time rather than throwing them all in at once. So let me give this a taste. So it is for salt. Just to hear more. You see that crushed tomato? Put nice chunks of tomato in there for you. Put about a half a teaspoon in. And if you have high blood pressure or you're watching your salt, don't put it in. You can also do this with like two jars of ragu sauce if you don't want to make homemade sauce and that would be even quicker. But I like to taste a homemade and it's not that hard to make. Okay, that's good on salt. I'm going to put sugar in. I'm going to try about a teaspoon of sugar. That's about a teaspoon and a half, but that's fine. And we're going to stir and taste. And if there's anything you guys would like me to uh, make for you, as long as it's nothing off the wall and like really uh, wild, like pheasant under glass and all that fancy crap, let me know and I'll try to make it. But my uh, specialty is comfort food, down home cooking. That's what I like the best. Okay, I'm going to put a little more salt in there. And those onions I put in, it's good on onion. So I'm putting a little more sugar and not more salt, more sugar. Brain's trying to do two things at once and they ain't working out so well. 
All right, give this a taste. A little more sugar. And you want to add in gradual, that way there. You can always add more, but if you get too much in, well, then you're kind of in a jam. A little bit more. So now we're at about two teaspoons of sugar. Get a drink of iced tea there. Right, let me give this a taste. Okay, that's tasting good on sugar. I'm going to put a little bit of celery seed in here. You can also use fresh celery. You would fry that in there with your onions. And that's about half a teaspoon worth. And that should do because celery seed is pretty potent. It goes a long way. Yep, that's good. I'm going to put some oregano in here, about a teaspoon. And they say to grind your spices between your fingers to wake them up. So we'll see how awake that gets. All right. And this is a really quick one pot delicious meal that'll feed six comfortably. A family of six. Just a hair more oregano. About a half a teaspoon. And I'm not going to taste that because I know that's going to be alright. Add some Italian seasoning. Put about a teaspoon of that in. I didn't rub those the Italian seasoning to wake that up because uh, it didn't work with the oregano. I think my spices are that old that it'd be like waking the dead. But they still taste good. It's just you're not going to get fresh flavor out of them. Okay, that's tasting good there. Now lastly, I'm going to put some parsley in. I'm sorry, I'm going to put some garlic in. Where's my mind today? About a teaspoon. And you can also use garlic powder, granulated gar garlic, or fresh garlic. I'm just using the uh, jarred garlic because that's easiest. i get the garlic off my spoon so I taste it. It's easiest for me today. Okay, that's tasting good. All right. Now those uh, crushed tomato cans, a 28 ounce, I'm going to get one of them full of water. Right now I'm going to dump the whole can of water down in there. And now this looks awful runny, but it's supposed to be, because when I put my elbow macaroni in, it's going to drink up all this extra liquid, and you're going to have a nice thick sauce over top of your macaroni. Now I have a one pound box of elbow macaroni I'm going to dump in. I'm going to stir that good. And see, we're still well below the full line, and that's important. You want to be careful not to go over, because if you do, it's going to spew up out the top of your uh, exhaust valve there, where the steam comes out of. All right. I'm going to close my lid down and seal it. Close my vent to air tight. All right, now I'm going to set this on high pressure and give it 12 minutes on high pressure. Press start. Now this will come up to pressure and it will start counting down and I'm going to let it sit and let it release naturally because while it's cooking I'm going to do my dishes and the other things I need to do around the house. Then when the pressure releases I'll be back. Alright my pressure cooker goulash is done. You can see it drank up all that extra uh, liquid. And if you don't have a pressure cooker you can make the sauce in a pot like I showed you and just boil your pasta in a separate pot, drain it and add it in, follow the directions on your pasta box. So let's go ahead and fix the plate and see what we got. All right, I'm going to finish this off by topping it with some Parmesan cheese. All right, there you have it. Pressure cooker goulash. Give this a try. I think you'll like it. And until next time, I'll see you.